thank you for coming to my presentation. Um, my name is Becca Burns, and I'm also Kit Becca on Twitter or Bakita Boo on Instagram. I'm here to talk to you about social media and social impact today, but first I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and then we'll dive in. So I'm a dental hygienist, but I also work at a startup in East Liberty called Shift Collaborative. I work with clients doing digital marketing, um, specifically social media management for a lot of our clients. And I have a nonprofit organization here in Pittsburgh called Harmony of the Andes, where we provide health education for children in La Paz, Bolivia. So today I really wanted to talk about social media and its social impact for two main reasons. Um, the first is to share some stories about some really incredible individuals in Pittsburgh who are creating change through their personal brand online. Um, I'm also going to tell you a little bit about how social media has affected my work with Harmony of the Andes and how I've been able to build a personal brand that I believe has had a social impact on my community here in Pittsburgh. I also wanted to talk about this today because I really want to encourage all of you to to really be intentional about the message that you're creating online, um, to think about yourself online as a personal brand, as a way to, to really invest in your communities and create a social impact, not only on, online, but also offline as well. Okay. So when I talk about social impact, I'm not just talking about doing good, just writing one quote on social media, um, sharing a positive inspirational quote or a positive inspirational image. I'm talking about building something with others, um, working to improve the status quo of society. This is something that can't be done alone, it's something that we do together as a community. Now I'm going to kind of split this into the presentation into three bits. Um, first I'm going to talk about your personal brand and how each of our personal brands has an effect online and offline. I'm also going to give some examples of people within Pittsburgh and out of Pittsburgh whose personal brands have a social impact offline and online. And then I also want to give you all tips on how you can start being more intentional with your personal brand. Okay. So we're all here because we're social in some way online, or at least you're interested in getting social online. Um, but first, before we start going online and posting away, I want us all to really start understanding the kind of impact that we have. We see how our social media has impact online, the fact that people, when we post, they like our content, they comment, they retweet or favorite. And sometimes you even have a conversation online, you build that community online, but this also happens offline as well. So if I'm sitting at a coffee shop and I see, um, I see a friend of mine who I haven't seen in person for maybe a few months, we're going to connect based off of some of the things that I'm seeing her post online. So say Kylie, I've been seeing her traveling the world and exploring, meeting new people and um, you know, pursuing her studies. If I see that online, it comes offline in that coffee shop because we start talking about all of the things that she's been doing, all the things that she's been uh, posting on, on, online. So I use this quote from Malala. Um, you probably all know her and the impact that she's had on, um, on women and our society, um, sharing her message to the world. But what's really interesting about Malala is that she is not use social media. She doesn't use her Facebook or Twitter, but she still understands the impact that it has. So although she doesn't manage her own Facebook and Twitter, she has um, an actual profile on both that someone else manages for her um, to spread messages. So she, she understands that we need to use it in a social, um, good, positive way. So some of the campaigns that she stood for include um, uh, Stronger Than and Books not bullets, which has spread and reached millions online. Okay. Now, as you either begin creating a personal brand for yourself online or investing what you have already, never underestimate the power of your online presence. 
The reputation that you build in a physical world it manifests itself online when you begin typing. So when you begin posting online, you're building this reputation, this personal brand online. When we begin sharing, it's, under, it's essential to understand that your personal brand impacts your online and offline communities. Have you guys seen these tweetables and blogs, by the way? I love them. I just prayed for them. Okay. So, um, of course, we all know Oprah Winfrey. She is a public figure and a thought leader. She shares, um, she already has a great audience. She already had a great audience before she got onto social media. Um, but through social media, she's able to engage her audience in a new way. She's able to share the pieces of her life that may have been overlooked in the past, um, sharing about how she likes gardening and cooking her own foods. She's also able to share current events and current causes that she believes in and stands for. She's able to share daily stories about her life and send messages to encourage and empower others. We all know him as well, Bill Gates. Um, he's also a good example of a public figure who has created a personal brand online that shares current events. We can visit his platform knowing that, and it, with the expectation that we know he's going to be sharing about certain causes that are current um, and things that he stands for and believes in. Okay. Now, I want to start getting into some of the local leaders that have really encouraged me in my personal branding. Um, I asked Justin if I could talk about him today. So this is Justin Ferzano. He's one of my really good friends here in Pittsburgh. And I actually met him about two years ago working in the beauty shop, which is a co-working space in East Liberty for um, startups and nonprofit groups. And he was one of the members there at the same time. I didn't meet him face to face at first. I started following him on all of his social media platforms. Um, and I started seeing just how much his, his personal branding was relating to what he was doing with his nonprofit. So his nonprofit is Cameroon Football Development Program. And they provide soccer programs in Cameroon for children, teaching them about health education and life, um, life skills. And as I got to know Justin online, I got to see just how much, um, how much he cared about this cause, and it made me care about it too. It really showed me that if I wanted to have people care about the things that I really care about and the passions that I have, I have to start sharing them, making it, making it visible in the online world. Since meeting Justin, I've met other people who have demonstrated the same understanding of creating a strong and influential personal brand. Um, some of the people that I've met um, who are here in Pittsburgh doing awesome things is Doug Smith, who shares an encouraging message every morning. Um, he, this on the upper right hand, or your left hand side, um, <coughs> Doug Smith, he works at a nonprofit called Light Up Place, it's a shelter in, um, south, in Northside. And Doug Smith, every day at 6 a.m., he shares a positive quote. And he doesn't just share this quote, he shares a message along with it. Um, he engages the audience by telling stories, not only about what's going on at Light of Life, but about what's going on in his own life and what he's learning from and what um, really uh, pushes him and his passion to help these people um, just get back on their feet. Now, Marie Fallon, I met her um, through through a group, group called Rotary International. And it's a group of people who are working for, just to help in different volunteering opportunities in Pittsburgh, as well as professional development. And she's another person in Pittsburgh who is really active on social media, sharing about all of the things that they're doing through Rotary here, um, not only in Pittsburgh, but internationally as well. And then um, one of my friends, Lindsay Smith, she, she talks about um, self-care. She's the food mood girl, girl of Pittsburgh. Um, she, she shares a lot about um, just treating our, our bodies with respect and body acceptance. And all of her messaging goes in line with 
with her brand, her branding for um, Cleveland Girl as well. And of course, um, we have Tom Baker, who's one of my favorite and one of the most energetic people you will ever meet. But he he is the executive director of Big Brothers Big Sisters, and um, all of his his posts and messages through through his Facebook and Twitter and Instagram all relate back to not only Big Brothers Big Sisters, but just the concept of mentoring um, students and being encouraging and uplifting to the people that you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so now I want to share my personal brand, the one that I know best, and how it has created an impact locally and globally and provided me with a community and experiences that I'm just really thankful for. This is me. Um, my first post on Twitter was in 2009. I was really excited about going to Pitt, obviously. Um, I went to the University of Pittsburgh after um, growing up in Colorado. I moved here about six years ago to go to Pitt for pre-dental. Then I decided to change everything. But anyway, this was before I really understood um, what I was doing online. I had a MySpace. I, had, I started on Facebook. Um, and I found out about Twitter, so I wanted to, to have a space where I could kind of create myself. I think um, oftentimes people get online and they want to, to um, I guess, well, personally for me, I wanted to get online to meet new people and to also just share my thoughts and my opinions, have discussions with people, so I started on Twitter. Now, when you begin to look at all of my social media and the content that I present through my social media platforms, you'll realize that I, I really like fresh flowers. So I post a lot about fresh flowers. I love having fresh flowers in my house all the time. It's just me. It makes me me. makes me really happy. You'll see, you'll see all of the workplaces that I go to. So five-star dentistry is the dental office. I go to the Cube Creative Space in East Liberty. Um, You'll see some of my favorite coworkers, um, which are all right here too. <laughs> and you'll see the Global Switchboard, which is where I, I work for Harmony of the Andes, which is the nonprofit. You begin to see the connections of my social media. I may share random posts of flowers, but that's just what makes me me. I use everything that I am to share the things and people I love, and I share the the causes I believe in. If I see one of you walking down the street and I say hi and I smile, I'm not going to sit down with you and show you all of these pictures of my life and what I stand for unless you ask me. You may have the same passion and the same drive, the same connection. Maybe you, you have some kind of connection to South America, but I will never know. Social media allows me to share this with a, a large audience in a way that is reachable, in a way that is engaging and tells a story. So these are some, some images of Harmony of the Andes. Um, we have, we were preparing for a trip last year, which all of these images relate to, um, which I'll get into in just a bit here. So being socially engaged online, it gives you the opportunity to share a message with the community that you may not be able to reach offline. Now, when I began posting about Harmony of the Andes on social media, I used my own platforms for about the first year. Um, we would get engagement from family and friends, people that I knew um, would already be supporting me. And we did this for the year before creating all of the, the own, its own platforms um, on Twitter and Facebook. Last year, I was able to see how much of an impact um, that our personal brands had um, when we, we first planned our first fundraising event, um, which was in November of last year. So we had one month to plan for this event. Um, the reason why we were planning this was uh, to basically kick off a community assets assessment that we were doing in La Paz in the following December. Um, we wanted to engage with the community, see what some of the other nonprofit organizations uh, were doing there already, and really start asking questions of the community that we wanted to serve. Um, 
So we planned this event to have a dinner to share with the community what we were planning on doing. And um, we did it all through social media. We had less than a month to plan for this event, so we were just boosting posts, sharing content through our personal brands, as well as through Harmony of the Andes um, platforms. Now, this event was absolutely more than anything Alexis, my partner, and I could have ever asked for. Um, we ended up having over 300 people attend the event, which was remarkable for us because we, we expected maybe 100 people to show up. Um, we had, did have an event page on Facebook, but not very many people had RSVP'd, so we just weren't sure. And of all those people that attended the event, we knew about 25 or 30 people who were there. Most people that we asked and interacted with um, there, we did have a survey of how they found out about the event, and almost all of them found, about it, found out about it through Facebook and Twitter. And we, we uh, reached more than reached our goal for the fundraising. Um, we had well over the amount that we had anticipated, and we were able to serve the community in Bolivia when we went in December, providing over 800 families with meals, clothing, and blankets. This is, these are some of the pictures that we were able to share through our, our, um, our platforms um, from La Paz. So this group, we actually reached out to, through Facebook when we got to La Paz, um, asking them if they would like to help us with distributing the meals. Um, there were a couple different churches and a top, couple different community groups who were already working there that we, we were able to engage with on, on Facebook. And then this group of girls we met through Twitter, actually. Um, the one right in the middle eating the apple, she, um, she had posted or retweeted a post that we had sent on Twitter, and we got all of her girlfriends to come and help and play with the kids. It was a really fun thing to see. Here's the video. So when we got back from La Paz, we were able to share all of the stories and everything that happened with the community that helped support us, both online and offline. Oh no, it's not working. Well, this is a really adorable video of, oh wait, actually I have my Facebook. So it was really fun. I'm obviously not a video editor. <laughs> But it was really fun to be able to share this story with the people who we didn't even know who were helping to support us. I lost my place. Give me a second. So my personal brand has given me the opportunity to serve and grow my connections in Bolivia, but it's also had an influence in my community in Pittsburgh as well. I've been able to connect with other like-minded individuals and taken that interaction offline to serve others and work to help create awareness of services offered to support those that need it here in the city. My personal brand online, it's transitioned to a world offline that I didn't believe I, had, I could have created without social media. At least not as quickly as I, I could have offline. Through my messaging, my connections and engagement with others, I've learned how to better serve my offline and online communities. Alright, so now I want to leave you with some takeaway tips that you can use as you're creating your own personal brand and just being more intentional about creating a personal brand that has some kind of social influence. So one, creating a clear message. 
you are your personal brand. You are everything that you say, everything that you do online, the way that you engage with people, all of that makes up your personal brand online. So start thinking about the question, what kind of impact do you want to have in your online and offline community? You don't even have to think about your offline community right now. Think about how can you contribute, how can you create a message online, and what is, what is that message? So um, my social impact challenge to you is to find a cause or an issue that you are passionate about and commit to sharing one piece of content weekly. All right, two, uh, choose a platform. So you have a place where your voice is heard, but where is that place? Is it through Facebook? Is it through Twitter or Instagram? Depending on what the cause is that you want to share, or who you want to share it with, um, it really, you know, those things depend on, or the platform depends on those things. So it may be through Facebook. Maybe you want to share uh, more content, which is, is good for Facebook. Facebook allows you to share a large amount of content at once, whereas Twitter, you only have so much that you can say. So think about who your audience is and where your message will spread. So the social impact challenge is to create a social media platform, including your social impact message. Three, get connected. This is one of the African proverbs that I've uh, learned through Justin and his Cameroonian group. But many hands make light work. On, online, you're not going to be able to create the impact that you want unless you get connected with other people. There are so many people who have already done it and who are doing it and who are working really hard. And, and you can contribute to that group and you can contribute to the conversation by just getting connected. So my social impact challenge is to connect with one new group that is working to make a social impact in an area that you feel passionate about. And then give back. I like this quote. It says, when we are sharing stories to create bonds with other like-minded people, we want to give them social currency with the highest pass-on value we can. You have to give back to show people that you are interested and that you want to engage and that you want to become a part of this group and um, this purpose. So just get back to your online community. Uh, make sure that you're commenting and sharing um, with the people who follow you or who you're following. Um, it can just be a favorite or a retweet or a heart on an Instagram. And then take it offline. This is the most important part. So no matter what you say, actions will always speak louder than words. This is the fun part, because you get to take those connections that you've made online, um, and you get to apply them to your real life. You get to meet new people face-to-face, -face, offline. You get to see all of the things, all of the causes that people stand for in real life and see the change that is really being made. You get to see all the ripple effects that this is, this, um, personal branding is having in an offline setting. So if you want to connect with me, there are my connectors. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Oh, this is super short. But it's good. It's good for Sunday. Thanks for coming. Yeah. For um, my my own social media. Um, I think I probably would. There's probably a couple things I would have done differently. I think I would have created the, the platforms right away. Um, I think it did help that we were we were sharing it through our own personal brand or our own personal profiles. But um, I think creating it as its own 
and then sharing it through my personal brand would have been a little bit more uh, beneficial to getting people to like our, our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's probably the biggest one. Um, Harmony of the Indies nonprofit for you. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of that? Do you have the whole process of following the game in? Yeah. Because I've been looking into the creation of the nonprofit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I have a great person for you to talk to. Okay. Yeah. What is the nonprofit? I'm also working on it. Oh, great. Are you from Pittsburgh? Yes. Obviously. Yeah, I'd love to talk to you about it. I think also um, just taking my practices for, so with my clients through Shift Collaborative, um, we create editorial calendars for our clients and just, uh, and with scheduling posts, just making sure that we have a strategy for each client. Um, and I think it took me a little while to apply that to my own personal branding or art, because it seemed like a foreign concept to like have my own editorial calendar for my own personal profile. Um, but I also didn't do it that much with Harmony of the Andes in the beginning. So I think just being more strategic about my posting in the beginning as well would have been uh, more beneficial to maybe instead of 300 people, we would have had 600 people at our event or something. Um, and just being more consistent and frequent with our, our posting, so. In choosing a social media platform for your Um, something that's been really useful for me and I mean I think there are, so there are two things to this I think one that's been very useful for me as far as an online resource is um, social media examiner it has really helped me in just understanding how to have like what an editorial calendar actually looks like um, and the kind of frequency and consistency I want to have through each so social media platform um, because each is it's unique in its own. Uh, you know, Facebook, you can post two to three uh, posts a day, and that's fine. I mean, you want to be a little bit more consistent now, but, um, or frequent now, but with Twitter, you want to have like seven or eight posts a day, you know, because your, your tweet only has a, a life of six seconds. People aren't going to see it. So I think looking into Social Media Examiner, because there's just an overwhelming amount of content there, that will really help you. Um, with the basics, and then two, getting connected with other people who are doing similar things. Um, researching or just taking a look at some people who are doing, like who are within the same genre of what you're doing, and then using the content that they're putting out and seeing if it's working, applying that to what you're doing. Yeah, so um, Facebook does analytics, so if you create a page, you can you can go to insights within that page, which is um, a way to show your Facebook analytics. With Twitter, they actually have their own Twitter analytics as well. Um, and then Hootsuite has analytics, which is, uh, it helps with scheduling posts. You can actually schedule all of your posts ahead of time on Hootsuite or Buffer. Yeah, actually, um, hashtags have been really fun, especially with um, we're connecting with people in Bolivia, because um, when we when we went to Bolivia in December, I was looking up hashtags of different groups um, that were working in La Paz, 
And that's actually how we connected with the two groups in the first picture, um, through hashtags. It brought me to their group, and then I could kind of see their profile on Facebook, and then we just DM'd each other. Um, but yeah, absolutely, hashtags are really beneficial in reaching out to specific groups and people. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, I, I found out through their hashtag. But you could definitely, I mean, be looking on people's pages that you already know about and seeing what kind of hashtags they're creating. <laughs> Thanks.